Hi there, I'm Tom Field. I'm Senior Vice President of Editorial with Information Security Media Group. My topic of conversation today is XDR, the importance of network technology. Here to speak with me is Alex Kirk. He's the Global Principal Engineer with CoreLight. Alex, thanks so much for taking time to speak with me. Thanks for bringing me on. Alex, on this topic today, where do you see confusion in the market about what XDR is and how it's different from other solutions that enterprises are employing? So I think it's, it's one of those terms that's rather poorly defined at the end of the day. It's kind of like APT was back in 2008 or 2009, where there's a lot of people <clears throat> catching on to this new buzzword in the space. Uh, and every vendor kind of wants to define it a little bit differently because of course they've got their product that they want to sell. And so they, they want to twist the narrative of the story a bit uh, to be more along the lines of whatever it is that's going to get their stuff flying off the shelves. Um, when the reality of it is that, you know, XDR is not all that different from what a lot of, you know, more advanced defenders have been doing for a long time. We've, we've heard terms before like the SOC triad, for example, where you're talking about endpoint and network and analytics in the middle. Um, and, and really that's no different than XDR. Uh, it's just that they, they've got a better acronym for it these days. And so it sounds hotter and newer. Um, and so I think a lot of people are coming in with the expectation that XDR is something brand new and revolutionary, and maybe it involves AI and machine learning. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's just the fundamentals of covering your enterprise with the right data sources, meshing them together in an intelligent way, and then being able to do something with all of that analysis in some sort of centralized spot so that you're not swiveling between a whole bunch of different consoles to get to what you need. Alex, in a prior conversation, you told me you've got to have the N. So talk about the importance of network technology as opposed to a focus solely on the endpoint. Well, I mean, one of the, the things that's most obvious there is just the proliferation of devices that are never going to have an endpoint uh, agent on them. I mean, everything from, you know, the servers that are all vulnerable to Log4j probably don't have EDR technology on them. Uh, back to, you know, a year ago, certainly none of your SolarWinds boxes ever did. Um, and that you know, also omits all of your route switch devices, your IoT things, uh, even just those Windows boxes that slip through the cracks of large enterprises. You're never going to get anything approaching complete coverage of an environment if you're sticking to a pure sort of an endpoint technology basis. Um, and that's why it's so important to combine network and endpoint. Uh, is because, you know, you get much closer to actual ground truth when you have those two sources of data, um, you know, especially being that that network is something, it, it's indelible, you know, you can get onto a box and get root on it and disable the EDR agent. Um, you're not going to be able to own every bit of technology within the route switch environment to be able to fake packets as they grow across the wire. Um, and, you know, by bringing those two together, especially for sort of analytics that, that cross correlate off of each other, you know, it, it puts you in a position where you can hunt with the best of both technologies. Um, you know, there, there are fields that you're never going to capture on the endpoint side of things, user agent strings, um, so that you can do things like, hey, if I see Java being downloaded over LDAP by uh, a Java client, then you know, you're going to be able to pick that up off of the network side of things, but you'll never get, you know, what process initiated that suspect communication or some of those other deep forensic artifacts off the endpoint side. So, you know, yes, you need the end, but you need the E2 at the end of the day. Alex, you also told me it's about consolidation. What did you mean when you told me that? So it, it's really about consolidation of, of data sources as you're trying to figure out uh, the puzzle that is your environment. Um, because so many organizations that we see are onboarding data from potentially a dozen different sources within their environment. It's the, it's the web server logs, it's the firewall records, it's, uh, you know, the endpoint technology, all these different things, none of which really are intended to correlate particularly well. Um, they're all coming from different vendors and different formats with different levels of detail. Um, and because of that, a lot of folks spend more time 
normalizing their data and getting it into a useful model in their sim than they do actually performing analysis on that data. Um, and so really it's, you know, between that and the reality that if you've got a dozen different points of failure in your log stream, one of them is bound to have some problem at any given point in time, you want to shrink that number of administrative control points that you've got to deal with to pull these things out. You want to shrink the amount of translation and, and glue that you've got to have to put all these things together and go with sources that are comprehensive and designed to interrelate with each other right out of the box. Alex, you mentioned the SIM. How does XDR properly distinguish itself from SIM? So I, I don't think distinguish is necessarily the, the right word um, because SIM is absolutely a part of the XDR puzzle at the end of the day. You've still got to have a central data repository uh, where you can be performing analytics on your, your joined sources of data. Um, and, you know, I think the, the key difference um, in, in what an analyst might call XDR versus a traditional SIM setup um, is just the level of analytics that you're able to do on this combined data set. Um, because there's a lot of legacy SIM implementations out there um, that have a hard time storing enough data to be able to do coherent long-term analytics um, that don't play well with third-party uh, data sources. And so people, again, end up with this, this pile of noise sitting in a SIM um, versus a, a more modern setup has not only you know, all of the analytics tools that are able to interact with that SIM, pull all this conjoined data, do that sort of analytics where one backs the other up, um, but also analysts are able to, when they get that alert out of that analytic, come back and be able to see everything they need to know from the network and the endpoint side of the house so that they can really properly qualify and triage these things and deal with them in a much more expedited basis than, oh, I got an alert and five days later, somebody finally got around to looking at the ticket. Myths and realities. What some of the, are some of the popular ones you'd like to expose here today? So, I mean, the, the one thing that I would say uh, is that there's, there's a lot of folks out there that they want that turnkey solution. They want to just be able to buy something from a vendor and not really worry about it, and it's going to solve all their problems. Um, and at the end of the day, we all need to stay away from that mentality. Um, I think as much as there's a lot of hype around the XDR category, uh, like I said, it, it really isn't that much different from uh, what a lot of folks have been practicing out there in the wild beforehand. Um, and so it, it's all about, I think, being able to, to have intelligent analytics and analytics that you can really understand and validate. Um, I think that one of the key pieces of the puzzle is when something comes out of that black box, do you know what it means? Um, do you know what the scope of it is? Do I need to have everybody working overtime on Christmas? Uh, or is this the kind of thing that a junior analyst can make his way to when he gets to it? Um, and so it's, it's all about, I think, understanding your environment too as a baseline, um, because that's, you know, having, having done vulnerability management with Tenable uh, as an engineer in the past, it continues to amaze me how many organizations don't have a basic grasp on what is even in their environment in the first place. Um, and so I think if you're going to do XDR well, you've got to not ignore those fundamentals uh, and you've got to be willing to put in some of that hard work that, that leads you to a proper understanding of what you're dealing with in your environment um, and just you know, try to automate your way through as much of the drudgery as possible to make it more interesting for humans day to day. Alex, to bring it back to Corelight, what are you doing to help your customers to get the most out of their XDR investments? Well, so, you know, to my point about openness of analytics, uh, being a, a company founded on open source and open data standards, um, a big part of our mission is to make it so that when you get that analytic, whether it be from our platform or another one that's consuming our data, it's very easy to go back in and have clarity about what these things mean and you know, what the triage level on them is. Um, but, you know, in addition to just that fundamental openness, we've been doing a heck of a lot of work 
uh, with some of the major vendors in the space trying to make sure that things are turnkey out of box. Um, you know, for example, uh, the folks over at CrowdStrike actually invested in us as part of our Series D round recently. Um, and so we've been in talks with their engineering about ways to have a common pivot point directly between our data set and theirs. Um, the folks over at Microsoft actually chose us as a launch partner for uh, their Defender for IoT platform, and we're the sole network vendor providing telemetry into that setup. Uh, as well as, you know, we've been continuing to do work with the folks over at Splunk as, as market leaders in that space. Um, everything from the boss of the SOC uh, exercise that they put on that we did the CTF for this year down through, you know, a whole variety of integrations with everything from security essentials to the machine learning toolkit. Um, so our, our focus is really enabling folks to have control over their data and understand what's going on but make it as easy to get to that point as possible. Good, Alex, I appreciate your time and insight today. Thanks for spending some time with me. Yeah, absolutely, been a pleasure. Again, the topic has been XDR and the importance of network technology. You just heard from Alex Kirk, Global Principal Engineer with CoreLight. For Information Security Media Group, I'm Tom Field. Thanks so much for giving us your time and attention today.